watching weight currently? Is it possible that I'll never need treatment or how long do you wait? And what am I waiting for? <laughs> that is a, that is a great question. Um, there are patients in watch and wait who will never require treatment. Um, Watching and waiting, you know, we're watching blood counts, watching size of lymph nodes. So things that you're, you know, you want to, that we're watching for and you're watching for um, are change in lymph node size. So are they growing? Are they becoming more symptomatic? Is there a rapid change in them? Um, are we seeing a change in the blood counts? Are patients starting to have a drop in their blood counts, which can happen if somebody's spleen's getting bigger, if they have uh, lymphoma in their bone marrow and that's um, progressing. Um, watching for the, the, if the lymph nodes are causing a problem, you know, does somebody have one in a location like the neck that's starting to make swallowing difficult or talking, you know, changes in voice, that's something you want to treat. And then there's something called B symptoms that we watch for. So um, if a patient has night sweats, um, you know, feet, day, night sweats are like drenching night sweats, soak the bed, have to change clothes, potentially sheets, um, fevers, so daily fevers um, that occur, or significant or rapid weight loss um, for no reason. Um, all those are kind of things that we want people to watch for. And like, um, you know, we discussed a little bit too, if patients start having um extreme fatigue, start not feeling well, not being able to eat, not having appetites if they have a new pain. And again, everybody can have aches and pains, but if you're having pain that's not going away or some sort of symptom that's not, not improving, those are all things we want to definitely have checked out. Okay. Thank you. I imagine with some of your patients in that mode, there's what I call the mental gymnastics of thinking, okay, I have this cancer but I can't do anything about it. And is this, these symptoms are really vague that come up. So um, do you allow your patients just to contact you if they're saying, I think I have these symptoms, I'm nervous about this. Can they come in and um, have a visit with you or contact you at any time? Oh, yes. So we have um, a 24 hour triage line. I think, you know, I recommend that if patients have a question or concern, it's better to ask us because if we don't know about it, we can't help is the first thing. Usually I, you know, we take, talk to the patient and say, okay, you know, how long has this been going on and see if it's red flag, like you need to come in right now, or is this something that maybe we might recommend getting a set of labs to look at certain labs to see if they've changed at all. We might say, okay, this seems like something we should actually see you for, but I want CT scans too, so let's order them so I can have that information when you see me. Um, so yeah, I think people should always call with any signs, symptoms, concerns, and then it can be addressed. Now, there's some things that we might say, okay, you know, we think based on everything that new cough is probably more likely a respiratory infection, it's okay to see your PCP. But you know, we also go through through that as well. So yes, I think it's always best to to check in and not let something go. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm guessing that's challenging for some of those people in that mode, just thinking, well, I'm just waiting here. So that's that's gotta be a little bit more challenging. I yeah. think you're um, absolutely right. And sometimes, you know, there is, sometimes there's a benefit um, to, you know, certain like rituximab therapy when there is disease there and it's it is, you know, um, a challenge to think that it's not being treated. <laughs>